Hey guys, what's going on? Darren here, and welcome back to the preview and prediction series. This is a series where I'll be previewing and then giving my predictions for the upcoming Grand Prix. And this time, I'll be doing it for the Dutch Grand Prix at Zandvoort. If you do enjoy this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I try and release at least three videos every single week, and I also reply to pretty much every single comment I get. And I always look forward to reading and responding to your predictions down below. Before we get into the preview for the Dutch Grand Prix and also my predictions, let's first take a look at the previous race at Spa. And what can we say? Max Verstappen went from 14th to 1st in the space of just 12 laps. It was absolutely unbelievable. His car, with a fresh power unit, had a massive straight line speed advantage versus the cars around him. But it was not just a straight line speed that was impressive, but it was also the fact that he was overtaking multiple cars being stuck in traffic on the soft tyres and he was able to do all that and yet still had better tyre life than Carlos Sainz in the Ferrari who was also on the soft tyres but he was in clear air the entire time. Not only that but he was also faster than Perez who was on the medium tyres and yet somehow Verstappen was able to drag the soft tyres further into the race than Perez was on the mediums. This all led to a very convincing win for Max Verstappen. Ferrari had an okay race, however communication in that team is just poor. In qualifying they accidentally sent Leclerc out on fresh softs when he was only out there to give Carlos Sainz a tow, which essentially meant that they were wasting a set of soft tyres. During the race they were constantly questioning Leclerc almost as if they don't even trust themselves when it comes to making strategies. And then to top it all off, Leclerc didn't want to box for softs at the end of the race, but the team ignored the request to stay out and they asked him to box anyway. And this turned out to be to his detriment as he came out behind Alonso. He did get past him, but then he got a pit lane speeding penalty. Carlos Sainz, despite finishing in third, had a bit of a lonely race and he just didn't have the pace of the two Red Bulls and ultimately once they got past, he was pretty much on his own. Mercedes had a bit of a mixed bag race. Lewis's race came to a very early end and this was due to him turning in on Alonso at Le Com, and eventually that launched him into the air and that was the end of his race. George Russell on the other hand had a pretty decent race, albeit a little bit lonely at times. He had a good battle with Perez early on but ultimately, once he got past him, he didn't really have much to do. That was, of course, until towards the end of the race, where if the race was a few laps longer, then it's a good chance that George Russell would have got past Carlos Sainz and finished in P3. But overall, it was pure domination from Max Verstappen and Red Bull Racing. Is this track specific, or is this because of the rule change? I'm not too sure, but I'm sure we're going to find out more this weekend at Zandvoort. The circuit at Zanvo is a very technical circuit with a lot of corners that all flow together and no real long straight. There is very little room for two cars to go side by side and there is two DRS zones, however one of them is very very short. With that, there are two possible overtaking spots on the circuit and it is at the end of each DRS zone. However, it is far more likely that all the overtakes will happen into Turn 1. Pirelli will be taking the three hardest compound of tyres in the range, and the reason for this is due to the loads that will be going on through some of the banked corners at Zanvoort. This is, in some ways, somewhat conservative by the tyre supplier. However, due to the potential for punctures, it is better for them to be safe rather than sorry. Because of this, I believe the Grand Prix will be a one-stop race, with a couple of teams maybe doing a two-stop race. The current fastest ever lap of the circuit is a 1 minute 8.885 by Max Verstappen, and the race lap record is a 1 minute 11.097 by Lewis Hamilton in the Mercedes last season. So, I would just like to take a moment to say thank you all so much for your support on the channel. And if you haven't already, of course, please do hit the like button down below. And please also consider subscribing to the channel for more F1 content if you have not already subscribed. With that, let's get back to the preview. Now, before we get into this year's Dutch Grand Prix, let's take a look at last year's race and see if there is anything that we can learn from that Grand Prix for this year's Dutch Grand Prix. Much like this year in Spa, the race was complete domination 
by Max Verstappen as he dominated the Grand Prix from the two Mercedes cars. There was a grand total of 24 overtakes during the Grand Prix, which shows that the circuit is not an easy place to overtake, unlike at Spa. For context, this year there has only been two races with less overtakes, and that was at Imola, where the DRS was not activated for a very long time, and also Monaco. But obviously, it's Monaco, so that's to be expected. The fastest lap of the race was set by Lewis Hamilton. During the Grand Prix, there was 29 pit stops as the vast majority opted to do a one-stop strategy, where they basically went from the medium tyres to the hard compound tyres. Max Verstappen won the race on a two-stop strategy, and that may have been down to the pace that the Red Bull and Mercedes duo were running at last year, starting on the soft tyres, then going to the mediums, and then finishing on the hard compound tyres. Now let's look to this year's race and start with the top three teams, and firstly, Red Bull. Red Bull are coming off the back of a dominant 1-2 performance in Spa. Max Verstappen, as I said before, flew through the field in record time to dominate the Grand Prix from Perez in second place. This weekend, it should be a lot tougher for the team, as I predicted in Spa, it would be good for them due to the straight line speed advantage that they have over Ferrari. But Zanvo is a different circuit altogether, it's much more like Hungary, and despite the fact that yes, Max won that race, Ferrari were the faster car, and if they didn't bottle the strategy, Charles Leclerc would have comfortably won that race. With this in mind, in a circuit full of corners, it should mean that Red Bull will not have it all their own way this weekend, and it should be much better of a fight between Ferrari and Red Bull. Speaking of Ferrari, next up is them. Spa was a very difficult weekend for the team, but I did say in my Belgian preview that Spa would be tricky for them against the Red Bulls. Zanvoort, for me on the other hand, should be a stronger weekend for the team, and in fact, I think they could actually be faster than Red Bull. The reason for this is Zanvo is a lot of corners that all flow together. As I said before, similar to Budapest, it's a type of track that is all corners and pretty much no straights. It is perfect then for this year's Ferrari car. It will probably all come down to what strategy does Ferrari implement. Will they do the right thing and be able to go an entire Grand Prix without messing up the strategy? That is fundamentally what we're waiting to see. And finally, there is Mercedes. Mercedes had a bit of a shocker weekend in Spa. They were even further off the pace than I anticipated. I did say it would be a harder weekend for them, but I didn't expect it to be as hard as it was. They were beaten by Alonso in qualifying, and in the race, they weren't really looking too hot until the back end of the Grand Prix. Zanvoort could be better for them. However, the circuit is notoriously bumpy and has a lot of elevation change, which typically does not play into the hands of the Silver Arrows this year. So, with that being said, Zanvoort could be another tricky weekend for the team. On top of this, Pirelli are taking the hardest tyres in the range, and Mercedes typically struggle this season with generating tyre temps. So the harder tyres could work against them, and it could be a bit of a tricky weekend for Mercedes. So with that in mind, it's now time to go to the predictions for the Dutch Grand Prix. And for qualifying, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc to score pole position. Ferrari for me should be a very fast car in Zanvoort, and over one lap, Charles should have it in him to bag pole position for Ferrari, provided he makes no mistakes. In the race, I also believe that Charles Leclerc will win the Dutch Grand Prix, provided, of course, that Ferrari don't bottle any strategies. In second place, it will be Max Verstappen, and Carlos Sainz will round off the top three, with third place on the podium. The top midfield team for me will be McLaren this weekend. Spa was always going to be difficult for them because of their draggy car, but Zanvoort should be much better for the Papaya team. And I think they're going to be there fighting with Mercedes. But that's what I think. I would like to know though, what do you guys think? Let me know down below. Who do you think will be on pole position? Who do you think will win the Dutch Grand Prix? I pretty much respond to every single comment. So let me know down below and let's get a conversation going. And of course, as always, comment, leave a like. And if you haven't already, of course, subscribe to the channel for more F1 content. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.